Welcome to another exciting episode from Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Tia Ayer. Devil Nisha Origins, everything you need to know about one of the greatest modern-day DC villains. DC comic writers and creators have churned out one iconic villain after another over the course of the last couple of decades. DC villains are notorious for being dark, gritty, complex, and above all, powerful enough to match for the likes of Batman and Superman. In this video, we bring to you yet another DC villain who makes quite the match for our favorite heroes. Ever heard of the Devil Nisha? He is a comparatively new villain in the DC Universe, but that hasn't stopped him from making his mark. He is brutal, ruthless, and dangerous, all of which can be seen in his extensive appearance in the five-part series Batman Superman, World's Finest by Mark Wade, Dan Mora, Tamara Bond villain, and Aditya Bittaker. Has this red-skinned brute piqued your interest? Keep watching to know all about him. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Exploring the origins of Devil Nisha from the comic series and what happened to him. A Chinese warlord known as the Devil Nisha who lived in the 16th century BCE was killed and then brought back to life using an elixir that gave him the gift or curse, depending on how you look at it, of immortality. He lived in the 21st century and came into conflict with Batman and Superman. The Devil Nisha is introduced in the second issue of the Batman Superman World's Finest. The story begins with the Doom Patrol finding a sword, rather liberating the item from a madman named Zahil. The sword was said to be from the Shang Dynasty around 1600 BCE, from the Zhengzhou area. We learn that the sword belongs to Nisha, a skilled warrior from China. He was the son of China's most powerful warlord, Li Zhong. The young warrior fought and won many battles, leading his father's massive armies. But all of that military power was unfortunately not enough to protect young Nisha, and he perished in battle. Distressed and saddened over the death of his son, Li Zhong ordered that his son's body be impeccably preserved so that he could find a cure. Yes, you heard me right. A cure for death. Zheng wanted to resurrect his son and decided to go on a tour of the world to look for ways to bring Nisha back. He tortured people for information, extorted them, and threatened many wise and learned men, but to no avail. No one knew anything about bringing corpses back to life. He then resorted to buying people and information, showering them with money in hopes that it would be an incentive enough for them to share their secrets with him. A time came when his father solely devoted himself to resurrecting Nisha and gave up all other endeavors. He at last started scrubbing the floors of a reputed magician in a last-ditch effort to curry his favor, and after a decade of preserving, the magician finally relented and gave him the secret of the elixir of eternal life. Li Zheng brewed up the elixir and gave it to his son, and voila! The elixir worked, rousing Nisha from the dead and giving him eternal life. However, when Nisha heard that his father had given up everything they had, wealth, fame, fortune, and respect, he beheaded his father without a second thought and set out to earn the respect that he believed that his father had lost by scrubbing floors in the lair of a magician. He killed many over the course of multiple years and finally gained all that his father had lost. He gained respect amassed immense wealth and gathered an army that was twice the size of the one that his father commanded and only answered to him. However, he was not just a warrior. Due to the mystical and magical circumstances that granted him life, he took to dark magic and started using magic weapons. With all of this, he came to be known as the Devil Nisha, cruelty cutting down all of his foes and anyone that dared to cross him. However, his terror spread so far and wide that he had to be stopped and the noble house of Jin in China decided enough was enough. They assembled a team of magical warriors and deities, but even this dream team was unable to kill the immortal Nisha and hence resorted to imprisoning him. They successfully imprisoned him, and now coming back to the present again, where our heroes are dealing with multiple threats coming at them one after the other, it seems like Nisha has broken free. Batman sends Robin, accompanied by Supergirl, to the house of Xi to find out all that he can about Nisha and how they managed to imprison him all of those years ago. Supergirl and Robin use the sword to travel all the way back into history of the sword to try and seek out the leaders of the House of Xi by breaking through the time barrier. They track them down to the correct era and spot the members of the House of Xi. However, what they thought would be a positive welcome turned out to be the exact opposite. The members attacked the two heroes because they assumed that they were soldiers of Nisha due to the fact that they were carrying his sword. 
Robin and Supergirl quickly realized that they would be in deep trouble if they did not explain themselves well enough because, well, they were in fact carrying Nishaw's sword. In the third issue, we see that the members of the House of Xi refused to believe the two heroes and attacked them with all of their might, vowing to never show mercy to Nishaw's allies. They deal a fair amount of damage to the two of them before finally Robin decides to speak up. He insists that they come from the future and want information and that is when we are introduced to the four magical warrior members of the House of Xi. Shui, who is as fluid as river waters. Hua, who channels the sun. Kong Chi, who commands the winds. And lastly, DQ, who is one with the force of the earth. They finally relent, however, when Robin declares that they are from the future, a future in which Nisha has risen again. Once this misunderstanding got cleared up, they got to work. Shui told them that in a hidden area on a distant island, a village full of people exhausted three generations worth of magic to be able to build a special tomb that would be able to contain the devil Nisha. The four warriors had been tasked with forcing Nisha into a tomb. They clashed with him for five days and nights, fighting him constantly without a moment of rest. They kept pushing through the pain, injuries, and blood, fighting him inch by inch as they pushed him towards the tomb. They managed to push him into the tomb, but the task was not over yet. They still had to seal the door shut. In the meanwhile, Batman and Superman were out and about combating all the different villains that were coming out of the woodworks to fight the heroes and wreak havoc on humankind. Now the heroes had already assumed that all these villains were attacking them on the behest of the devil Nisha. However, they encountered a twist that they never saw ever coming. Green Lantern appears while Batman and Superman fight Dr. Alchemy and tells them that Nisha is no longer using villains as his soldiers. They quickly realize that he is in fact using heroes as Green Lantern traps them in a cage and in the last panel of the issue, we see Alfred standing under the red glare of the devil Nisha, presumably being controlled by the villain. In the fourth issue, things escalate as Green Lantern, under the influence of the devil, decides to take on both Batman and Superman as he has them trapped in a cage of his own creation. Both our beloved heroes try but are unable to break through the bars of the cage. However, Green Lantern smashes the cage as he attacks them head on. He heavily injures Superman, which should not be the case because, well, the power difference between the two of them is well known. And while Batman figures out that Green Lantern's power is being augmented by magic, he doesn't realize it fast enough and is attacked by the Devil Nisha himself. The Devil Nisha and Batman face off as he tells Batman that he's imprisoned for 4,000 years in a magical tomb and was back now, and he wanted everything. He toiled through the years of his imprisonment and created a spell, ruin by ruin, syllable by syllable, a spell that would be powerful enough to break his imprisonment seal. He said that he was only driven by the thought of the tragedy that would strike a world bereft of his guidance. Messed up, right? He thought that he would emerge from his tomb and face terrifying forces that would oppose his rise to the position of the ruler of this world. However, that did not happen, and he was nauseated by how little civilization had progressed. A world where humans struck down humans, and above all, a world that was in desperate need of discipline according to him. Thus, he began influencing people, controlling their minds, and wanted to bring all of humankind under his control, making them one large, indomitable army. Batman realizes that the reason Nisha was forming an army and was hell-bent on killing all the heroes and getting them out of his way was that he was scared that they would defeat him, just like the four magical warriors from the House of Xi had all of those years ago. When Batman vocalizes his thought, it angers Nisha greatly, and he flings Batman into the air as if the Dark Knight was nothing more than a pesky little insect. In the meantime, Green Lantern continued to batter Superman until Batman finally came to his aid. After having been thrown aside by Nisha back in 15th century China, Supergirl and Robin had only scratched the surface of the secrets that surrounded Nisha and his imprisonment. They learned that sealing the door of the magical tomb shut came with a massive price. Like all magic, this one also had a price that had to be paid. However, the reason it was a massive price was that Nisha himself wielded a hefty amount of magic, being able to bend natural phenomena and dimensional walls to his will. He had taught himself to adapt to any attack from any known science, every known force, and every known element of the Earth. He used to experiment with possession magic as well, and it took all of the might of the four warriors to push him into the tomb and then subsequently seal it shut. The four warriors then tell Robin and Supergirl what exactly the major price that had to be paid was, and the two come back to the present with the other information that they had managed to gather. 
However, on their way back to the present, they encountered a time storm, an anomaly that happens when someone tries to change the course of history or steal something from the past. In this disturbance, Supergirl and Robin unfortunately get separated. Back in the present, Batman and Superman take on the Green Lantern jointly and try to defeat the force of his willpower that was being controlled by the devil Nisha using his possession magic. They manage to take his ring off and during this event, Batman and Superman merge into one entity with the help of Green Lantern's energy and fusion power. The suit of this hero represents elements of both of the heroes, with both Superman's signature colors and Batman's iconic emblem. The devil Nisha laminates his decision of making Green Lantern his champion but quickly sends other heroes under his influence to go ahead and defeat this new Batman-Superman hybrid. Firestorm, Red Tornado, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, and Black Canary are among the heroes under Nishaw's control and they charge towards the Bat-Super. As he fights these possessed heroes, Nishaw keeps using his possession powers on regular people out on the streets to recruit them into his army. Finally, Bat-Super, that's what we're calling this hybrid now, gets some good news when the Doom Patrol contacts him, informing him that they had managed to locate the magical tomb. The tomb was on the little island near Corto Maltese, and they had the coordinates, and that is likely that if the tomb held the devil once, it would be able to contain him once again. Bat-Super began attacking Nisa, taking him up into space and pummeling him with all that they had, pushing him towards the tomb. But just before the final push, the fusion fell apart and Batman and Superman became two separate entities once again. This allowed Nisa to gain his bearings and retaliate, but before he could seriously injure them, Supergirl flew in at him, catching him unaware, pushing him into the tomb area. She tells the heroes that they have to hurry and carry out the procedure to sealing him inside, and this is when she reveals the price of containing him. One of them would have to shut the door from the inside. The story is then continued in the fifth season where all of the heroes congregate, shocked at the price that would have to be paid for the imprisonment of Nisha. Supergirl shows them the enchanted talisman that was given to her by the warriors of the House of Xi to use as the seal for the tomb and tells them that the talisman would have to be placed on the inside of the door to seal it, without which the door would not lock and the devil would not be contained. The heroes quickly start arguing over who it would be to take on the responsibility of staying inside with the devil and placing the seal. Supergirl decides that she should be the one making the sacrifice because she felt responsible for losing Robin during the time storm that they encountered on their way back. However, before any of this can be spoken about further, Superman gets possessed by the devil Nisha and on the devil's order sets out to kill all of the heroes. Chaos unfolds all around them as Supergirl desperately tries to help Superman shake off Nisha's possession spell. But Nisha keeps coming at her via Superman. Superman verbally berates her and tries to get into her head and it is only after Robot Man punches Nisha and makes him lose his bearings that Superman comes back to his senses. They realize that Robot Man had an advantage over Devil Nisha and that was the fact that he was made of technology that Nisha had not studied in his time and thus was not familiar with. However, the hero's hopes are dashed as Nisha quickly adapts to Robot Man's attacks as well, crushing him. Superman finally comes to the rescue. Using Kryptonian tech, he traps the devil Nisha in the Phantom Zone. After he disappears into the Phantom Zone, Supergirl starts telling Batman about what happened to Robin when Nisha appears in front of them, having cracked and forced his way through the zone, still adapting. Superman takes the decision to take the talisman seal and lead Nisha into the tomb and try to seal him forever, sacrificing himself in the process. Before any of the heroes were able to stop him, Superman had already sealed the door shut behind him. However, good old Superman does not do anything without a plan and Batman quickly realizes that the Phantom Zone projector was gone as well. Superman planned on going into the Phantom Zone and coming out of it through the crack that Nisha himself had forced open, a crack that was rapidly fading. The heroes rushed to force the crack open and keep it open for Superman to make his way through it and they managed to pull Superman through the crack back to safety. With that, Superman had successfully imprisoned the devil Nisha for the foreseeable future, at least as far as we know. What makes him as strong as the likes of Darkseid? In the comic book series, Nisha put his versatility on full show for fans it also made another observation, namely that Nisha 
is essentially a far more hazardous version of Doomsday. Similar abilities including overwhelming strength and the quickness to adapt to any circumstance or a new method of attack. Even their physical characteristics have a few minor overlaps. But Nisha is more perilous because of where they diverge. Nisha's abilities to go beyond simple force and he has the intelligence to fight for causes other than hatred, which Doomsday lacks. Nisha is a destructive force that cannot be stopped. He is only interested in destroying, but it's his relentlessness that makes him such a unique menace. People can see what he wants when he's on the field, but they can do nothing to stop him. Due to his adaptable physiology, he is Superman's equal or an even playing field and may even be his superior. What brought him down the first time won't do so again. Physically, he's immensely strong, but his greatest power comes from his adaptable invulnerability. He quickly recovers even if he is hurt or even banished by a force he has never encountered before. The issue demonstrated that it took Nisha only a few seconds to orient himself and strike back at Robot Man and only slightly longer to physically fight his way out of the Phantom Zone after becoming imprisoned there. His powers and abilities include decelerated aging, which can be seen in how he literally looks the same even after being imprisoned in a tomb for 4,000 years, still ripped with no damage at all to his muscled body. He also obviously has immense control over magic, as is evidenced by him literally making up ruins and syllables to make the spell that he eventually used to break out of the magical sealed tomb. As far as his specific abilities are concerned, he's a skilled swordsman, beheading his own father in one quick movement of his sword, along with being really good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, as seen in almost all of the fighting sequences in the comic book series, especially as he kills Robot Man. He is also a skilled and enigmatic leader who follows military protocol and uses magic to recruit people to join his army. This also brings us to what one can consider Nisha's greatest power, that of possession, which allowed him to control villains and heroes alike even the most strong-willed of them including Green Lantern and Superman. This is an extremely scary power because using this, he can control anyone and everyone and form legions of soldiers and armies. Additionally, his notable weapon of use is his mystical sword. Nisha's activities are guided by his intellect. Nisha's main goal in all he does is to rule the entire planet. Without letting his fury get in the way of his ambitions, he can focus on all of his might on a single undertaking. Nisha is more than simply physically strong. He possesses magic secrets learned through the years of study that not only make him almost impervious to harm, but also level him with Superman, the most potent hero on Earth. Further, Nisha has been patiently waiting for a millennia for his moment to rule the planet, and his perseverance has paid off. He is scheduled to return shortly, and when he does, the world's heroes won't be ready. Although they may have defeated him this time, Nisha has now gauged their potential. Next time, he won't rush headlong into a war like Doomsday. He will take advantage of their flaws and prepare himself by learning as much as he can about the contemporary environment. Nisha considers himself to be a god, and with the impressive show of his powers that we see in the series, he is damn near close to being one, we'd say. He is a terrifying villain and holds his own against all of the major DC villains, making him one of the strongest, if not the strongest DC villain to be created in recent years. The stage is all set for a lot more from this incredible villain. What do you think about the devil Nisha? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.